Do you have the tendency to leave the club face open and miss right with your driver? Well, if that's the case, you're going to really enjoy this lesson. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter and Teaching Professional at Second Swing. Today I have Skylar Kistler. Skylar has been on a few videos with us now mm -hmm. and what we've noticed with your drives, you've had the tendency to leave that club face a little bit open. You've missed, your general misses to the right. Mm -hmm. We've done a draw bias golf video comparing different drivers and we still had that tendency for that ball to still start a little to the right instead of the right. Mm -hmm. Well, today we're going to solve that. Today we're going to have fun. We're just going to do a little instructional work to help Skylar hit some much straighter drives. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. My tendency is generally to the right, so I'm ready to straighten it out. All right, well, this is going to be fun because a lot of our videos are you know, a little more club fitting uh, topic. We do some instructional stuff too, but <laughs> I see potential here, so I'm excited to help fix your drives out. Cool. Skyler, let's uh, first get you to hit a few drivers and then we'll take a look at the numbers. You just hit that one really well. Hit that one really well too. Okay, Skylar, uh, let's just take a look at the, the numbers here. One thing I noticed is you really hit it well. You hit it very close to the middle of club face, which is awesome. As I mentioned, I see potential, and potential when you're hitting close to the middle of the face, that's, that's great. Um, so you can see your efficiency rating was 148, which is awesome, and you had pretty high ball speed. Um, one thing I did notice is you have the tendency to leave the face angle just a little bit open. You, mm -hmm. had, uh, you had one shot here, we take a look at these two shots here, we'll notice the face angle wasn't as far open on these two particular shots, and actually your face to path was slightly closed. When, what happens when you do that, you're able to get that ball to curve to the left. Um, so what, what does this stuff mean? So first off, let's talk about club path. So your club path, we take a look here, is in to out 4.8 degrees on average, which if you want to draw the ball is a great start because if your club path is negative, that means that you're coming slightly over the top or kind of out to in, the ball is going to start left and go left. So the good news is your club path is swinging out towards first base or so going out towards the right side. The only challenge we're having here is this face angle. Mm -hmm. So on average, your face angle was open 6.7 degrees. So considering your face to path, it's open two degrees to your path. So I would want to try and correct club path and face angle a little bit here today. And I want to play around with a couple of different ideas to see if we can improve those as well. Your club path at five degrees into out it's good, but I'd love to see that just tighten that up just a little bit and get a little bit more neutral so the ball can start a little bit more online um, to, to start with. So how are we going to do that? So ball position is going to help. So mm -hmm. one thing I notice when you're, when you're hitting uh, shots is your ball position sometimes is a little bit more towards the middle of your stance. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, your ball position has been, I don't know, three, four inches inside your, your left heel. I just want you to try and exaggerate a couple here where we move the ball position. Let's just go at least to the, the heel or maybe just a little bit further. So if I was going to put this down here, I want you to shuffle your feet. Yeah, perfect. I want to see what happens here if we try that ball position just a little bit further towards the front. So the reason we're doing that is you think about the golf swing. The golf swing, it's, it's on an arc, right? At some point in that golf swing, that club is going to start coming to the left. It just, it just has to. It's not going to continue go, 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 go. Eventually, it's going to turn over. Well, if you move your ball position from being back, naturally, you're going to 
at impact be here, so that's out towards the right. If we move that ball position further forward in, in our stance at impact, that club's had time from here to here to get that club face to release over a little bit more and get that path to turn over a little bit more there too. So ball position is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. So let's try a few shots here first with ball position. I do also want to talk about club face a little bit as well. And we might play around with the grip a little bit. However, I'm always a little hesitant to play around with the grip just because it's a preference. Mm -hmm. um, there's, it's, some players work really well with grip changes, but sometimes it takes a long time as well. So that's just, let's just move ball position forward. Okay, so let's just check here, see your ball position while we're doing this. Perfect, so I, I love that. And that's just exaggerated just a little bit further forward. Let's hit, let's hit a couple of shots here. Nice. So it wasn't the most, it wasn't struck perfect, but notice what happened to your club path. It mm -hmm. went from being five degrees in and out to 2.8 degrees in and out. Nice. Oh boy. Uh oh. 240 yards. And a little drawer. Wow. Wow, that was good. Yeah. So that one, your face angle, believe it or not, was closed. It was closed 0 0.3 degrees. And we didn't even need to do anything with your face angle. We just changed your path a little bit. That left face a little bit open on that one. Yeah, I could definitely feel that. Yep. Just give me a couple more, just getting used to that feeling with that ball position up, up a little bit further. Nice, really I good. Back a little. 1.4, that was pretty good. I'll take that. Yep, nice and straight. Nice. Okay, so the first shot was a little bit of an adjustment. I'm going to uh, take that one away, but let's just talk about those other four shots that we hit and just talk about the differences in, uh, sorry. let's just talk about the differences in path. So right now we're just focusing on club path. So if we take a look at the, at the numbers here, your club path originally was 4.8 into out. Just by moving that ball position, a little bit further forward in your stance, what happened is your club path basically cut it in half. It was at 2.3. So you got an easier job to get that ball to start a little bit straighter mm -hmm. if your path is closer to, to neutral. And that's just by having that ball position just a little bit further forward. And we were maybe exaggerating it just a little bit just to, sh to show the difference, but it's something to just kind of work on a little bit to help with path. Uh, the other thing was interesting is face angle. So we weren't even really focusing on face angle, but, but by having that path further left, your face angle actually was four degrees closed than before. Still slightly open, but your face to path is at 0 0.3. We'll look at the average curve. Basically, very minimal average curve there as well. So that was, that was awesome to see. Your best drive, let's take a look. Your best drive pre-lesson was 234. Um, that one you actually did draw and get the face to path to go a little bit to the left. But your face angle was still 4.1 degrees open. We got one here at 2.239 now. Your face angle was zero, negative 0 0.3. So basically dead square. And you're able to get that thing to draw just a little bit more. So path is important. Um, just to show, just to really emphasize path, I'm, I'm going to get you just to play around. This is just for our viewers to, to see why ball position is really important. I'm going to get you to go back. I know, I know it's going to feel really awkward to you, but I'm going to try and move that ball position back in your stance. I just want to see what happens to your club path now. Okay. So with ball position back, let's try and just have it like very close to the middle of your stance. This is, like I said, this is probably going to feel pretty, oh gosh. pretty awkward. So shuffle this way. There we go. I'm going to tee it just a little bit, little bit lower here for you because I don't want you to put, you, put a dummy mark on your driver. Okay, let's just see what happens to your club path. Nice. 
One thing I definitely noticed is where that ball started on the, on the screen. It started just a little bit over here to, mm -hmm. to the right. Look what happened to your path. It went to 6.8. Just do that one more time. I don't want you to hit too many more shots in that position as we're trying to make that change. Yeah. yeah, so that one kind of hit the screen kind of like right here. Club path, face angle, really hard. Mm -hmm. If your ball position is too far back with your driver, it's really hard to get through the ball. You have to work really hard at it. If you move that ball position further forward, you're giving yourself just a little bit more time to get that club face to release over. So that is an indicator of having that ball position too far back. Mm -hmm. Moving the ball position further forward is a great way to help neutralize your club path if your club path is too far in to out. Now you think about if golfers, if their club path is too far out to in, they can actually maybe play around with moving the ball position just a little bit further back in their stance to mm -hmm. help there too. But, because I know a lot of golfers, they'll come in and I see a lot of club paths to the, to the left. You're just the exception, your path was a little too far in to out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go back to that ball position being a little further forward in your stance. Now we're going to play around with club face control. So I'm going to take a look at your grip. Now let me ask you, have you ever worked with anyone on your grip? I've had all? a couple pointers here and there about yep. grip, but I think I was working too much on making it stronger that I was, my hand was cramping. Okay. I don't think I was doing it properly, yep. but I've tinkered with it a couple times. Okay. Well, you mentioned the cramping. What about grip pressure? Because grip pressure is important as well. I'm probably gripping it too hard too. Probably gripping it a little too hard. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation for grip pressure is kind of squeeze the, well not squeeze the club, just kind of grip the club. Imagine you're going to be holding like a toothpaste container and toothpaste is not going to come pouring out. It's just going to kind of dribble out a little bit. That's where your grip pressure should, should be. Okay. But I do want to take a look at your, at your left hand and your right hand. And I have my, my glove out here too. Uh, what I like to see a lot of the times here is I want to see two to three knuckles on, the, on that left hand. What I did notice when I looked here, it looked like I could see maybe two. So if you look at this left hand here, so grip like you're normally going to grip for me. Okay, so I see one, I see two. And you can, you can see a little bit of that foot joy logo, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you definitely want to make sure you can see this logo. If, so golfers, if you're watching and if you're looking down at the club, and you don't see this logo on your, on your left hand, or if you don't wear a glove, don't see two or three knuckles, that's a good indicator of something to work on with your grip if you miss to the right. So one, two, three. Perfect. This V, so if you take this right hand off for a second, this V is going to be pointing up towards your, your right shoulder or your right ear. Perfect. Now let's add the other hand. Okay, so this V here also pointing up towards your right shoulder or right hand. There you go. So that's considered like a, a neutral grip. That, that one you just moved just a little bit more, so that's considered just a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. And if you go the other way, clearly that would be obviously a very weak grip because <laughs> you can't see that logo there too. So you definitely want to see the logo. Two to, three, two to three knuckles. If you have a tendency to miss to the right, I say play around with three and just see how three works out. Let's just see what happens because the grip, it's, it's an interesting one because it's very important. It's the only connection you have to the golf club. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone grips differently. Everyone swings differently. Some people make different changes in their swing to make up for the way they grip the club. So I'm curious to see what the, what the direction of the ball is going to start with that little stronger grip. Ball position's great. Nice, wow, ball speed. Good start. Face to path on that one was 0 0.8. Nice. Ball speed again. Wow, really good. That felt good. That was excellent. Look at that face angle. So these are, these are the numbers you want to see when you're, if you want to hit the ball straight. You see, anything time the, the path or the face angle starts with a zero, good chance the ball's going to fly pretty straight because it's going to be matching up together there. That was, that was excellent. That was really good. That one might have been a little, the good ball speed, a little left maybe. There we go. Nice. 
So let me ask you, how does that grip change feel? It, it feels better. I think before, honestly, I think my, what I misunderstood was I was keeping this thumb underneath. Okay. If that makes sense. And I yeah, think this, that's where this a lot thumb of here, it just kind of sits just on the, on the side. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I was just trying to make it too strong to where I couldn't get this thumb. Yep. And I was just getting a lot of problems in my wrist. Right, yeah, that, that thumb there, it just kind of sits just on the side of the, of, the, of the grip. And then your top hand just kind of covers it. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah. Nice. Well, those are four great drives in a take row. That those might be the four straightest shots I've seen you hit in a, in a row right there. <laughs> I think so too. Nothing really went right. I so know. That, I that, like that's, it. That's, that's, that's interesting there. So let's take a look at those numbers real quick because I want to see if there's anything that's really worth noting here if we're taking a look at path and face angle relationship. So we got. 14, 15, 16, and 17. Well, first thing, your ball speed's great. So just kind of like it was when you were originally hitting, it's actually better. So you actually picked up a little bit more ball speed. Um, launch angle was going to be slightly lower, so 16.7 versus 19.2. That's because the face angle is a little bit more closed than it was before. Look at the spin rate, basically 2,000 RPMs. So you drop your spin rate down a lot. Highest carry on average, 203 going 206. Um, so we look at your carry distance here. So even though the ball was going further left, it still even carried further. And then it obviously chased out further there too. So we picked you up a little bit more distance. We basically picked you up 13 yards there right off the bat. Um, we take a look here, touching on path and face angle. So we first started out pre-lesson, you're at 4.8 with your club path. So it's in to out 4.8 degrees. It was just, just a touch too far. Then we move the ball position forward. 2.3, so we cut it in half, essentially. Then we wanted to just show our viewers what, why ball position is important. Uh, so I got you to intentionally move that ball position further back. But as we expected, the club path got further into out. Mm -hmm. Then we went back to that forward ball position. I didn't even need to tell you about that, we just focused on the grip. Well, your club path was the same as where you were, funny that. But look at this face angle. Face angle right there at 0 0.3 degrees, so that's basically dead square. If you do that, you're going to hit a gen gentle little draw because your face to path is slightly closed to your club path. Does that, does that make sense? It does, yeah. the numbers there? Okay, because a lot of people get confused with Club path, face angle, face to path, what does all that mean? Um, so club path is the direction the club is going, or you're swinging at impact. Face angle is the direction the club face is pointing in relation to the target. And face to path, that's the difference between that club path and face angle. So if you, you know, take a look here, you can see 2.1 into out, face angle 0 0.3, so the difference is negative 1.7. We get the difference here to be very little, especially if our path and face angle are close, closer to neutral, you're going to have less curve on the ball. And you can see here, we finally got you to get that ball to draw. If you, if you draw the ball just a touch, you're going to hit some nice long drives, going a little bit further. Um, yeah, one other thing I find really interesting here too, just to finish up, having that ball position too far back, look what happened to your attack angle. You actually hit down on the ball. We don't want to hit down on the ball with <laughs> the driver, do we? Right, so really good with regards to attack angle, um, really good height numbers. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed there with regards to those little changes that we made. And then, wow, look at that consistency there on those last four shots to finish up. Definitely like that blue circle, right? I do. I, haven't yep. see, I don't know if I've ever seen that. All right, total distance, carry distance, blue circle for the win. So do you have any questions? on a quick little uh, lesson here today. I, well, I do have one. So if I was to, you know, to go out and practice, would that be, that grip be something I should implement in my golf game forever now? Or should I just work with that strong grip until it gets better and then go back? Yeah, uh, I would pay attention to ball flight when you're playing. Um, if you go too far over, you may start hooking it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's always, I know that's why I gave you that check up as two to three knuckles. You, as I mentioned, that, that logo, if you, if you don't see it, we know it's too weak. But if you see a lot of it and you, the ball is starting to go left, you might have to 
move, move it just back in the middle a little bit. Because mm -hmm. let's face it, as humans, we love to exaggerate. We like to make big, big, mo big movements, and all of a sudden we'll be going the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always reach out to me if yeah, you need. Course, say, yeah. If you're hitting the ball, ball left, and say, hey, I'm hitting the ball left. Let's, let's check the, the club path and the face angle out a little bit there too. But practice it, yes. Absolutely practice it. Um, and then transition to the golf course. I'd, I'd start out trying to transition with it on the golf course and get used to it on the course. And then to the point where eventually when you're playing maybe a competitive match or was against someone or against some friends, mm -hmm. where eventually you'll start to feel more comfortable. Because, yeah, it felt comfortable on those four swings to, to kind of finish up there, but uh, it takes time. Uh, I will say, for me to make a, a big swing change, for years and years and years I've, I've swung so differently, it takes a lot of time. I always like to say roll 10,000 to really basically perfect something. Probably not going to be 10,000 swings, hopefully, mm -hmm. but it does take a lot of swings to make an adjustment or a lot of correct correction to make an adjustment. And if you sneak in a few incorrect moves or incorrect grips, then you kind of fall back a little bit. So does that help answer that yeah, in the best way? So mm -hmm. absolutely practice it. And this grip it's going to be pretty similar with not just driver, but with your other clubs too. Okay. So it's not yeah. just not just driver. If you have a tendency to leave the face a little open, with the driver there's a good chance you'll probably leave the face a little open more with the, the irons as well. Driver is always going to be the hardest because it has the least amount of loft on it. So that's why most golfers they fight that slice because they don't have enough loft on their driver. Mm -hmm. But this is good stuff. I love getting that face angle turned over for for you. Um, got more ball speed, you got more ball speed and you really didn't swing any faster so your efficiency numbers went up quite significantly compared to those other two positions there as well. But good numbers, consistently carried over 200 yards and going 233 yards is pretty good. So golfers, if you like this instructional content, please uh, comment to, on our videos. We'd love to keep doing these videos as well. Um, please let us know if you like it or if there's anything that you would love to see on the channel as well. Also, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.